What's up guys, John Foley here from True Barbecue and today I'm going to be showing you how to smoke baby back ribs in a Weber kettle. That's right, I'm not going to be using my smoker today. I had a question from someone asking, hey John, I don't have a smoker but I want to smoke some ribs, but I have a Weber kettle, can I do it in that? Well, the answer is, you can. Uh, using a smoker is obviously going to be a little bit easier and give you a little bit better results. However, that doesn't mean you can't use a uh, grill, you know, Weber kettle or some other type of, of, of grill to uh, smoke baby back ribs or any other type of ribs. And I'm going to show you in this video how to set up your grill, which is most important, and then we're going to go through the whole process of smoking some baby backs. First things first though, let's fire up this bad boy. Okay, let's get started. As you can see, I'm using 100% hardwood lump charcoal as my fuel source. If you have briquettes, I recommend using the original blue bag. Now as you can see, I have some unlit charcoal on the uh, left side of the, of the grill and then I have a chimney that's about uh, two thirds, about two thirds full with charcoal. I'm going to light this chimney up, get these coals all nice and going and then when they're all hot, I want to dump them on top of the unlit unlit coal and that's going to give me uh, a little bit of longer burn since you know the ribs are probably going to take between three four hours uh, to cook um, and this will allow me to not have to add more coal halfway through even though I probably still have to add some more coal towards the end um, but we'll get to that later. Now I like to start my chimney with using a uh, little uh, what's called a lighter cube you can get them at um, any of their big box hardware stores and it's pretty cheap. This thing's around three bucks for for a pack of 24 and they work great. So that's what I use and let's go ahead and light it up and get our chimney going so we can start smoking these ribs. All right, so as you can tell, the coals are ready to be poured out of the chimney so let's go ahead and do that and then we'll prepare our ribs now I use gloves for this because I don't want to get burned and we just place the hot coals over the unlit ones that we had on the floor of the pit and those will light the uh, the hot ones will light the other ones as they go out, giving you a little bit longer burn. Now we're also going to use um, we're also going to be using wood chunks for smoke, and we're going to add that in just a second. So as you can see here, I got some wood chunks. Always use chunks, not chips. And we're gonna go ahead and add these right on top of the uh, hot coals. Go ahead and place our grates on there. And another important piece is the top vent. We're gonna place on the side where the, the, our coals aren't. So we got the coals on this side. I'm gonna put the vent on this side. It's gonna allow the heat to kind of flow over, you know, where the ribs are gonna sit and then out the top vent. And this is called indirect grilling, um, AKA barbecuing. There is a difference between grilling and barbecue. Grilling is over direct heat. And that's what you do for, you know, steaks and burgers and chicken, you know, grilled chicken at least. And um, barbecues with indirect heat. And that's what, you know, that's what a smoker is built for, is for indirect heat. And we're just setting up our Weber here for, as indirect. And um, we're gonna go ahead and barbecue some baby back ribs. So let's get those prepared. Well, let's get our ribs ready for the smoker as it's, you know, getting up to temp right now. Now, usually, you know, on my uh, Weber smoking mount, when I, barbecue I have a uh, digital thermometer that I leave in and tells me the pit temperature and also has a food probe for bigger cuts of meat but 
For this video, I'm just not going to use any of that since I'm doing this video for those guys out there who only have a grill and no other type of um, you know equipment, you know, such as digital thermometers or thermo pens, you know, or instant read thermometers. So I'm doing it just as you see it. It's got the grill, ribs, and uh, that's all we're working with. First thing I like to do is take off that silver screen or you know, the membrane off the uh, back of the ribs. Now let's first take this, jump off that little fatty piece. Now the best way to do it is just kind of get your knife underneath that silver screen and using the dull side lift up. Um, if you use a sharp side you're just gonna cut it and you don't want to cut it you're just trying to create some sort of um, lift it off the bone just a little bit in order to get a finger underneath and then with a uh, paper towel you can go ahead and remove that silver screen so which I'm going to try to do there we go I get off Get it off as much as possible. Remember that this membrane acts as a barrier and your rub can't penetrate, smoke can't penetrate, and then when you bite into it, when it's all cooked, it kind of comes off like a thin plastic. So no one wants that, you want to take that off. Now the, you know, the meat and the bones are nice and exposed and ready for the rub. First, I'm going to put some hot sauce to act as, a, as an adhesive, something for my rub to stick on. You can use uh, mustard, you can use um, olive oil. I like to add some hot sauce though, since I like my meat a little bit spicy. And these ribs are for me today, which is rare because I'm always barbecuing for other people. But this is my dinner. This is all from Big Daddy. All right, now that we got the Hot sauce I'm gonna go ahead and put a rub. I'm using my own blend Chew Barbecue Barbecue Rub. I do have a video out there showing you how to make your own basic barbecue rub. You can go ahead and um, I'll put a link somewhere around here. You can go ahead and check that out if you like. Otherwise just use your favorite store brand um, or whatever. Let's go ahead and flip these around. And do the same thing to the meat side. Now, you can't do this ahead of time. If you go ahead and do that, uh, just you know, prepare it like this, and then throw them in the fridge until you're about to throw them in the smoker. I recommend doing it no more in advance, further out than four hours. Um, ribs are, you know, thinner cut. They're not like a pork shoulder or a brisket. That's, you know, a real big piece of meat. They're somewhat, you know, they're thin compared to those. And the salt in your barbecue rub, if left, you know, overnight, will pull out a lot of the liquid from the meat. And they're going to, you know, wonder why you are left with dry ribs when you smoke them perfectly. Okay, our ribs are all rubbed up and ready to go. And our pit is nice and hot. So let's go ahead and throw the ribs into the pit. Ooh, doggy. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and place the rack of ribs on the side, other on the other side of the, where the coals are at, so we can use that indirect heat. Go ahead and shut this. Remember, keep the the vent over the where the meat's at. Oh yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention. I like to add a foil pan. Put it over the hot coals. And then we're gonna pour water into the pan. This is gonna help regulate the heat so it doesn't get so hot. And also create a little humidity inside the inside the grill. So now that we have our ribs in the pit and we have our water pan over on top of the coals to help regulate the heat, now it's time to just relax, kick back, 
crack open a beer, read a magazine, watch some TV, listen to some music, watch some more of my YouTube videos, do whatever you gotta do to, uh, to build up an appetite because we got some barbecue ribs in a few hours. Ooh, man, it's smoky. Um, now we're gonna keep an eye on the pit and we're gonna check it in about 45 minutes to an hour to uh, see how the coals are looking, if we need to add anything or not. Those, two, those few wood chunks that we put on earlier to add all the smoke, that's as much as we're gonna use as smoke. The first hour or two for ribs um, is all you need when you for uh, smoke to kind of penetrate the meat and give you that uh, smoky flavor that, you, that you're looking for. So now let's just go back inside and uh, come back in a little bit. All right, it's been about an hour now since we put the ribs in the pit. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how they're looking. Oh, yeah, they're looking good. Water level in the pan is still about half, a little less than halfway, so we'll, we'll need to add our water right now. As far as the ribs, got a nice color to them. Uh, let's take a look at our coals. There's still a good amount of coals, so I'm not going to add any right now. So let's just close this up. And we'll take another look in one more hour. All right, we are at hour two of smoking ribs on a Weber kettle. And let's go ahead and see how they're looking. Looking good. Look at that nice color from the red that we put on it earlier. They look close to being done, but they're still have maybe another 45 minutes to an hour. We still have water left over in our pan, so we'll leave that level as it is. As far as our coals. Still got some coals left, however, I think I'm going to go ahead and add a few pieces so this doesn't go out within the next hour. So let's go ahead and add some more coals to the fire. Alright, now this is where smoker makes things easier. Since we're doing this in a grill, we're going to have to try to be quick with adding coals. Um, and we're going to have to remove the water pan and remove the uh, top grate with the ribs, allowing us access to the coals. So let's go ahead and get this over with. Be careful not to spill any of the water onto the hot coals. Hot coals and water do not mix. Let's go ahead and move the top grate. Add a few more. Just add a little bit of coals on top of the hot ones, and the hot coals will light up the coals that we put on top. There should be plenty. Should be plenty to uh, get us through to the end of the cook. I, Anticipate only about another um, 45 minutes to an hour and the ribs will be done. So let's go ahead and put everything back the way it was. All right, I'll check it back in about 30 to 45 minutes. Okay guys, it's been three hours on the dot since we threw the ribs into the kettle. Now let's go ahead and see how they're looking. Nice. They look done. 
Now you can see how the bones are starting to kind of, the meat's pulling back a little bit, exposing the bones. And that's kind of a good indicator of when they're done. You can also tell by kind of the juices coming out, squeezing out of the top. Another good way to see if they're done or not is by the bend test. And I'm going to show you that. Now the bend test is where you just take some tongs, get to about halfway in the ribs, and you see that? I'm going to do that again. About halfway underneath the rack, when you start lifting it, this top breaks. See it's cracking? So that's a kind of a good test is the, is the bend test, is where you, when you take your tongs and put it underneath halfway through the rack and then when you lift it up. And when you see where it bends and the top starts cracking, then you know they're done. So right now I'm gonna go inside and heat up some barbecue sauce for about a few minutes and then we're gonna glaze the ribs with some sauce. Okay, the barbecue sauce is nice and warm. I'm using the True Barbecue Sweet and Spicy Sauce. You can go ahead and use your favorite store-bought sauce or you can make your own. I do have a couple of videos on how to make your own barbecue sauce, both a simple basic barbecue sauce and a chipotle barbecue sauce. I'll put links on the screen for you to check them out if you'd like. Uh, if you are using um, a popular brand, you know, Sweet BB Ray's, which is a you know, very good store-bought barbecue sauce. I would, that's a, but however, it's a very thick sauce, and I recommend thinning it out a little bit with some apple cider, vin apple cider vinegar and maybe a little bit of apple juice. Maybe about a, maybe about a quarter cup per one cup sauce ratio, and kind of thin it out a bit. Now let's go ahead and sauce these ribs, which is the last step. Now, I don't know if you have noticed or not, but I forgot to mention earlier, you're gonna wanna keep the ribs bone side down throughout the entire cook. Um, you don't wanna flip them. Only flip them as we are right now to put a sauce on the back. Now, you don't have to put sauce on it. I, it's just a personal preference. Most people like sauce on their ribs, but you can just leave them dry you know, the dry rub that's on it, and that gives it plenty of flavor. And you don't need to put sauce on it. You can put it on the, put it on the side and kind of use it as a dipping, a dipping sauce. The key though, when saucing your barbecue ribs, is you only want to do it, you want to do it the very last step. You know, you don't want the sauce on here for more than five minutes, which is why I wait until the ribs are done cooking and then I, that's when I go ahead and sauce the ribs and we'll leave it on here for about no, no more than five minutes. You know, barbecue sauce has a lot of sugar and sugar will burn. And when it burns, it turns real dark in color and also it gives off a little bit of a bitter taste. So you don't want that to happen after you spend all this time cooking these ribs. Now total time, Again, took about three hours in this pit. If I had to guess what the pit temperature was, I would guess around maybe 275 to 325. So probably around 300 degrees. You know, when I barbecue ribs in my smoker, I try to keep it around between 225 to 250. And for baby bags, that means it usually takes around four, four and a half hours. So since we're cooking in the grill, it's got a little bit of higher heat. That's why we have this water pan to kind of help regulate the temp and total time took three hours on the dot. Okay, let's go ahead and shut the lid and let the sauce set for about five minutes. Okay, let's take these ribs out of the pit. Mmm, man, it smells awesome. Look beautiful, 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 beautiful. Well, that's not bad. Come on, take a closer look. Seven, six, five, four, three, two.
two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Well, let's start slicing into these and uh, see how they came out. Ooh, so tender, look at that. That is looking nice. This came out really good. They even got a nice smoke ring on there. So, if you're wondering if you can smoke ribs with only a Weber kettle, the answer, absolutely. Look at that. Absolutely wonderful. Go ahead and see how tender this is. Spread out the bone clean. Look at that. That's how tender this meat is. So delicious. Let me tell you, these ribs came out fantastic. Just absolutely wonderful. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little taste test, which is the ultimate test, see how they came out. Mmm. It's absolutely delicious. Got that nice, nice crunch, crunchy bark on the outside. Inside is just so juicy and tender, and it's just unbelievable. First, you get that sweetness from the sauce on the outside on the lips. And as you bite into it, you get that nice dry rub that we put on at the beginning. It's an absolute fantastic bite. So if you only have a grill and you want to barbecue some ribs, don't think you need to go out and buy a smoker. You can do it in your in your Weber kettle. Just follow these steps, and you'll be making delicious barbecue ribs in no time. And that's a wrap. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If so, please give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. And I appreciate you guys watching. Good luck. And let me know how the cook goes. Till next time, guys.